If you were reaching out and asking me, hey, would you recommend I go buy a Kubota M4? I'd say Folks, had this tractor over a year now and uh, debating, is it time to sell it? So, you know, uh, before I do, I want to tell you my thoughts on having this for the last year plus and uh, what I think about it. And I want to preface this by saying I do a lot of reviews, all right? Most equipment out there is pretty good. You know, there's there's things that can make it pretty good versus great or versus awesome or versus your favorite, but there's very few machines out there that are junk, you know? I mean, besides your Kubota B3350, we've talked about that, John Deere 2320, 2025R, Kubota BX, you know, besides those, everything else is pretty much, you know, you're, you're starting at a pretty high bar and then you're splitting hairs from there, maybe picking options, maybe picking a good servicing dealer, uh, maybe a certain feature that's standard on there you can't get from another brand. So let me tell you more about this one now. I had to check my notes. I got a lot of things I want to talk about. I'll make it quick. But you know, I mean, most of these tractors are not complex machines, all right? So you're not going to have a lot of issues. I'm going to get that out of the way first. I've had two things uh, that I've had issues with on this tractor in particular. One was with like a hydraulic chattering noise of some kind. <laughs> super annoying a lot of folks had it there was a bulletin that was out there um, I took this in recently and had that I think it was a, a line that was rubbing honestly I they told me and then I it went in one ear and out the other but there's a bulletin if you have this weird chatter related to um, the four-wheel drive kicking in and out then talk to your Kubota dealer because you can have that replaced somebody out there will leave a comment and remind me of what that is the other issue related to that when I had it in there I had wanted to get, I was waiting for a Summit Hydraulics uh, do-it-yourself third function to put on there, and they just hadn't come out with it yet. They were starting from the bottom and working their way up, you know, the, the BX, the B, the L, all that kind of stuff, and just hadn't got to it yet. So I had the dealer put a third function on here, and not really an issue with the Kubota tractor, more just they didn't tighten some fittings. And when I got it back here, I showed you recently, there was a, a pool of oil on the floor. That's actually what it was coming from was uh, the fittings that weren't tightened down on there when they installed the third function lines that ran back to the, uh, the housing back here. So those are the only two issues I've had and I've had this, I don't know, 14 fit, uh, fit well over a year now. A couple things I've done to it. I, I put that third function on. You can see these 511 grill guards here. These things are awesome. They got the front guard and the side guards. Uh, they're a discount club member. Save 5% with code GWT. Tires are filled, so there's liquid ballast inside here. First thing I do when I get a tractor is if... Have I ever bought a tractor new? I have, yeah, I bought one new. Most of them are used though. So the first thing I do when I get them is I have these tires filled just... It's extra weight. I think here it's maybe a 1, thousand, 1200 pounds of extra weight that's in here hanging out. Really good ballast weight when you're using that front end loader. And then on the back side, I went to Amazon and found a hydraulic top link that would fit on here. So a hydraulic top link is just the cat's meow. I absolutely love it, um, especially when you get larger attachments. You know, on a subcompact, you can manage most of those attachments to hook them up. Um, and they serve other purposes besides that. You can make adjustments when you're grading and using a tool, if it's a brush hog or a tiller or a box blade or whatever. But even just hooking up and disconnecting from attachments atop a hydraulic top link really comes in handy. Now I had three four series tractors in a row. A 4066, another 4066, and then a 4720. And really love my four series tractors. A really great machine. Um, I thought I was gonna miss it a lot more, but I haven't used, I still have a 4720, I haven't shown on this channel in, uh, I think, over a year now. Um, I haven't, I haven't missed it. And, and not that if I was using that tractor, if I didn't have the Kubota, I would still use the John Deere 4 Series or like a Kubota Grand L 6060 all the time. But I've, I've gotten a lot more comfortable with this. And the main hesitation I had was uh, really with loader work and using the power reverser or the manual transmission. Um, that is still uh, cumbersome to use. You know, if you're, if you're changing speeds, changing gears, changing direction a lot, um, it still doesn't compare to a hydrostatic transmission, the efficiency of it. And so that is, it's become less of a headache the more that I've used it, but it's still not, it's still the thing I like least about it, I guess. And so you go to a utility tractor like a Kubota M4, a John Deere 5 Series, and you're gonna only have a manual transmission of some kind. You know, it could be a, a pretty basic plain Jane uh, transmission, or it could be a power reverse, a little bit fancier. You have a, a slap handle to go forward and reverse on the uh, the steering column. But you, in the 
the 4 Series and the Kubota Grandel, you can get a hydrostatic transmission or a power reverser, you know, and we've done a whole video comparing 4 Series or large frame compacts to utility tractors, so that's not really what this video is about, but a lot of folks are interested in trying to make that decision, and that's just one of the factors. Folks, if you like tractors, then take just a second and hit that subscribe button down below. We put tractor videos out every week. We'd love to have you tag along. And if you're in the market for a tractor attachment, something for your front end loader, something to fit the three point hitch, we can help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com and see what we have for sale. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. Now I've mainly used this tractor for three point work. Okay, so, you know, pulling a, a box blade or a land plane, uh, bat wing mower, mowing the field, um, culta packing, you know, just different tools with the three point hitch where you can kind of set it and, and kind of forget it, right? So you just put it in gear and you're just kind of going in a circle in a loop or whatever, and it's not a lot of back and forth. I've done very little so far with the front end loader. I'm offloading some trailers here and there with the pallet forks. Not much bucket work with this tractor here. Now, I just got that third function on there like I told you. So I'm gonna have a grapple coming from Precision Grapples I'm gonna slap on there and we're gonna put this to work. Um, may, down the line, look at a, a loader mounted wood splitter of some kind, okay? We're, we're gonna see about that too. But you start to get into a tractor this size with a little bit higher hydraulic flow and you have some other options up there too. We're gonna see what that's all about. As far as three-point capacity goes and PTO horsepower, it's got enough to do whatever you need to do on a tractor this size. Front end loader, it's got a lot of, of oomph, but I was surprised, when was that? Last, last year at some point, I needed to get my, my brush mulcher, my bottom light brush mulcher for my skid steer. Um, back here somewhere else i can't remember where it was doesn't matter anyway and so the kubota was already out of my property with the mulcher on it and it wouldn't lift it up it, this loader didn't have enough oomph to lift up that brush mulcher to put it on a trailer and get it back over here so we had to turn all the way back around drive the skid steer off of that property hook it up and get it back over here which was that was a pain so that's the one time it fell short for me um other than that, though, it's done what I needed to do. Now, this is a nice look inside the cab, and this has been one of my favorite things. I, I look forward every time I can, can climb up in this thing and sit in it. Very good visibility, very comfortable, plenty of space. I'm about six foot three, a little over 200, working on that. And uh, it's got this buddy seat in here, too, and, and that's one of the cool things I, I liked about this uh, over the John Deere is that this model here, you can, you can flip this up. And it's got its own seat belt and everything else. You can carry somebody right along with you if you want to. Um, it would be a little bit more cramped. I mean, my foot doesn't go over any further than that. But, you know, if you want to bring one of your kids along on a ride, you know, you had that possibility to do that. Put it back down like that, too. So nice and out of the way. The John Deere's, at least when I was looking, didn't have that option available. So I really like that. Um, storage, all you, can, all you want. Good visibility on the sides, all around. Headspace. Everything you need. It's a very stable tractor too. I really like that as well. Haven't felt a, a bit of, you know, that side to side tippiness feeling. Again, a lot of that's with the liquid ballast in there. Rim guard, great solution for that. But the bigger the tractor you go, the more stable they're going to be naturally. Your subcompacts like the 1025, 2025s, LX, all that kind of thing. Even like the John Deere, I had a 3046R for a while. Side to side, that's still relatively narrow for where your center of gravity is up and down. And I felt like once I got to the four series, I finally started to feel like I was safely planted to the ground. Before that, it was a little sketchy. So uh, Chris, the cameraman there had a few things he said I should talk about. Uh, the seat, there's no air ride seat upgrade uh, that we know of, but this seat's actually really comfortable. I, I haven't found a need for a more comfortable seat. I think this one does just fine. Um, venting as far as the hvac system goes if you're if you're warm enough in the winter cool enough in the summertime this has done a good job keeping up i've mowed in the hottest of summer days uh, with this in the fields and i've been in very cold weather in, in the in the winter time too so it's been just fine in all those scenarios i think in the in the beginning i wasn't sure how this would work because all of the venting all the ventilation is right around the the column here and everything else and and all that but this has been really good for me and in fact in the summertime i like it a lot uh because you can blow the cold air like right on your core and it helps you be cooler that way too so i like that a lot um and then the remotes that came on here and maybe if i would have ordered this tractor new instead of buying it used i bought it with 60 some or maybe 70 hours on it somewhere right around there um i could have had it set up differently but when we're running our 
our wood splitter. It's a hydraulic wood splitter off the back. There's not a continuous flow function here. And it sounds like there is an option to get a continuous flow function. We just don't have it equipped on here. Um, and so I just kind of jam something and keep a, a valve open and uh, hold it open so the flow is continuously going through there. Not the normal way of doing it, but it gets the job done. Now this tractor really works great for me. Um, in my situation, right? Everybody's situation is a little bit different. I've here, well, here I've got about 40 acres or so, and, and only about half of that is usable for this tractor. So only about 20 acres, but I still find myself using it a lot just because of the efficiency of it with the size tools you can use. That said, if I only had one machine, I've, I've got a lot of machines, well, it would be a struggle, right? That would, that would make the decision a bit harder because it's the biggest, heaviest machine that I have. The R1 Ag tires are, are really rough on like a lawn. If I wanted to use this up to do some landscaping jobs around my house too, I really couldn't without causing lawn damage or maybe on the uh, uh, the drain field, you know, having too much weight, potentially crushing something there. And so that's, that's a trade-off. I have smaller equipment that can do that. If I had to pick just one machine for this scenario, maybe this wouldn't be the one, you know, or at least not with these tires for sure, because these will rip up uh, the lawn and, and divot it and, and everything else. And that's where potentially, you may lean more towards a four series or you know an L6060, something like that. Um, so that's really gonna have to be a decision that's based on your own circumstances. For me though, it's, it's hard to find much negative to say about this machine. You know, I feel like if I was gonna say the top three things that I really like about this tractor, first I'd say it's the cab. And, and maybe an open station would be similar, I don't know, but it's just, it's just quiet. It just feels solid and quiet. And uh, the engine's not too loud. I mean, even if you're outside using the wood splitter, you know it's on, but it's not terrible. Um, and it just feels, it just feels good. I mean, I don't know, I just, like it's just put together well. Uh, also the fuel tank, <laughs> may seem trivial, but the fuel tank, it's easy to access right here, okay? And it holds a heck of a lot of fuel. I don't know how much, but I rarely have to fill this thing up. And so that's, um, I have some smaller machines that seem like they have to get filled up all the time with fuel and it's just really annoying. So it's nice to be able to do a few jobs with a tractor, maybe more than that even, and not have to worry about topping it off. And then the last thing I would say is probably the overall, I wanna say stability. You know, and again, I'm big on that. I like to, to feel nice and safe when I'm in my machine. I don't wanna to have to worry about, is my tractor okay in this situation? Not that you wanna forget about it, but I just feel like it, it's good to go wherever I need to take it. Um, you know, and that's if I'm using the front end loader or the three point hitch or just driving the tractor from point A to point B, it just, it just seems dependable in a way as far as that goes. And so on that note, I have made the decision and I've learned from past mistakes, I'm gonna hang on to this machine. I'm gonna continue to, to set it up the way that I want, but I've got a lot of stuff on here that takes time. It takes time, money, effort, just to get it the way that you want it. And I still have to do some things. The most important thing I need to do is put my hydraulic multiplier on the back here because I wanna use a few tools like a big flail mower that tilts and, and shifts and all that kind of stuff. That takes um, multiple functions. You know, I've got the hydraulic top link on there. We may put a snowblower on the future that has three different functions. So I need more hydraulics on the back side, but I used to have a 4066 dialed in just perfect how I needed it and then, you know, I do it a lot, I get rid of it and go to a new machine and want to set up the whole thing again. And it's just a pain in the butt. And sometimes you got to leave well enough alone. And for me, that's what I'm doing this time around. It's a good machine, I would recommend it. If you were reaching out and asking me, hey, would you recommend I go buy a Kubota M4? I'd say, heck yeah, it's a great machine. It's not going to steer you wrong. It's going to be very capable. I think a lot of times it's going to actually be cheaper than like an L6060 or a 4066R. Don't ask me why, but it is. And so it's a good bang for the buck. So I hope that helps you out, gives you some real world experience on what a tractor like this is all about. I don't sell these tractors, so I don't have any, there's nothing in it for me to say you should buy this because I'm not getting a commission off of it, all right? I just think it's a good machine. And again, I think most machines are good. You're just gonna have to pick and choose those features that are on each one or a good dealer or a bad dealer or whatever, or brand preference, whatever you wanna do. But what I do sell are tractor attachments, both for the front end loader and for the three point hitch. And I am very selective about what I choose to carry and represent. I want high quality, I want the best features that are out there and I want a good price point. So it's gotta be a combination of all that. And that's what you'll find on our website, goodworkstractors.com. And we sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. And I'd ask if you'd take just a second, if you enjoyed today's video, to hit that subscribe button right down below. It is completely free. We wanna have you tag along and come back and join the conversation. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.